What's up guys, Lifting here. Today I am bringing you part 1 of my 20 quick tips video for Grim Dawn. This video is for beginners to the game and contains a lot of information I wish I had known when I started. Part 2 will cover the remaining 10 tips and will be released in a few days after the release of this one. In case you are considering purchasing the game, then please consider using my Humble Bundle link below in the description. It will at no cost to you, support the channel and it goes a long way. Thank you very much. Grim Dawn quick tip number one. In Grim Dawn, it is actually possible to bind a key to pick up loot for you. Go to your settings, then key bindings and scroll down until you find pick up and then bind whichever key you prefer. As long as you are close enough to the item on the ground, it will pick it up and you won't have to use your mouse to click every single little component on the ground. Quick tip number two. Grim Dawn has a rather excellent loot filter. Don't forget to use it. Unlike Path of Exile, the items in Grim Dawn does not need to be identified. This makes filtering loot work much better as it enables us to specifically show and hide items based on their attributes, not just their base type. So if you're playing a fire-based build and need fire-based items, then you can take the fire damage tab. If you're playing something that relies on vitality damage, you can take that and so forth. Generally speaking, it is also a good idea to turn off both common and magic items. Once you've gotten to, let's say, level 5 or 10 or something like that. Quick tip number 3. Transferring items to another character can be achieved via the item transfer tab in your stash. Any item put into any of the corresponding tabs in this section are shared between all of your characters. I recommend you put all of your component items in the first transfer stash tab to make them available for crafting and usage on any new belt you might be playing. Also by holding down shift while left clicking will transfer your items instantly back and forth between your inventory and the stash. And if you hold down control while clicking it also allows you to split a stack of items into different amounts. When you are interacting with the vendor right clicking the relevant item sells it directly. Clicking these two buttons in your inventory or stash respectively combines and sorts the items alphabetically. Quick tip number 4. Grim Dawn manages to do what many other ARPGs don't, making exploring interesting. There are secret areas, quests that unlock, skill points and attribute points, hidden items, lore notes and enemies scattered throughout Cairn that are worth checking out for their specific rewards. To prevent you from missing out on these, I recommend you use the Grim Tools world map feature. It will for the most part show you any location that you might wish to interact with. Some people prefer playing through the game at least once before using this feature, but many others like having it as a sort of guideline to ensure they are efficient and don't miss out on stuff as they progress. Alternatively, to avoid spoiling the map for you, you can simply import your character data into the Grim Tools checklist feature. By doing so, you will be informed about what you might have missed and you can go back to try and find it. By at least ensuring you have completed the important quests, you can feel safe knowing you have unlocked the ones that grant your character extra skill points and attribute points. Quick tip number 5. Pick up and save every component you find throughout your journey. These are used in crafting recipes or as a direct way of adding enchantments to your gear. To ease the burden of having to click so many components dropped, Install the Grim Internals mod to have it automatically pick these up for you. Check out my recent video on three different mods I recommend for the game to get more info about this once you're done watching this video. Not every component can fit any type of gear. By hovering over your gear while having the components in your inventory or stash, the applicable components will get highlighted and you can use that as a quick measure of figuring out if that particular component can be added to the relevant piece of gear. If you need to disable the tooltip, if it's in the way, you can hold down control and the tooltip will disappear. Now the component will only be highlighted if the item doesn't already have a component on it though. Keep that in mind. If you need to remove a component, then you can do so by interacting with the inventor in PCs. This will be done at the cost of destroying the item though, so be careful. This way you can use the component on a different item but you can also choose to save the item and destroy the component instead. Quick tip number 6. Does your character look like a Swedish hobo? Then fret not. You can, at the cost of iron, 
train smog and change your look via the illusions vendor. When starting out, you won't have much to choose from, but as you progress further into the game and find different types of gear, these designs will get saved and become available to train smog for your character. No one should have to look Swedish. No one. Quick tip number 7. There are several different blacksmith NPCs located throughout the game. For the most part, each of these smiths have their own attributes aligned to their craft. What this translates to is basically that whenever you craft a non-unique armor piece or accessory, one of three dedicated affixes is guaranteed to be added to the item. For instance, Angrim here in Devil's Crossing is guaranteed to add either Pierce Resistance, Percent Armor or Percent Physique attributes onto any non-unique item made at this forge. To check what each blacksmith provide, hover over the sword and shield icon next to the combine button. In the description I've linked a website that tells you the difference between all the blacksmiths and their craft alignment in the game, which might be worth checking out for you. Quick tip number 8. Follow a belt guide. Grimdawn is a complex ARPG with lots of depth. The downside to this is a steep learning curve and unless you're willing to risk your first build failing or in general just not feeling too great, then I highly suggest following a build guide. While a big part of learning and playing the game can be to create your own builds, there's nothing wrong with not doing so with your first few characters. By following a guide you're much less likely to get overwhelmed by choices and information and you can focus on exploring and learning the mechanics as you go. I'm rather stubborn when it comes to this and I never followed a guide. This resulted in my first three or four times of trying this game of getting stuck around elite and ultimate difficulty. This ruined the fun for me and I ended up putting the game away until I inevitably time after time returned and tried again. While this trial of error and success taught me a lot about the game and granted I also do make my own working builds now. It also prevented me from probably enjoying Grim Dawn for a long time and looking back I should probably just have followed a guide back then. So don't be stubborn like me, following a guide now doesn't mean you won't be able to create your own build later. And at least this way you will get to see what the game truly offers. Quick tip number 9. Besides skill and devotion points there are three different types of attributes you can allocate points into in Grim Dawn. These are physique, cunning and spirit. Allocating points into either Physique, Coming or Spirit will grant you additional health, while Cunning and Spirit also provide a damage bonus to either physical, pierce or magical damage sources. In case you are creating your own build, it is worth knowing that generally speaking any attribute point you unlock should typically always be invested into Physique. The reason being is that out of the three, Physique is the attribute point that provides the most health per point invested. It also provides defensive ability which is a very important stat that you will need high amounts of if you wish to take on the endgame content. So while the damage bonus from Cunning and Spirit is nice, it is generally agreed that this is better obtained via different sources such as from your skills, gear and devotion tree and your attribute points best left to be invested into Physique. Again generally speaking that is, there are of course exceptions to this. One thing to keep in mind though is that certain gear types have different attribute requirements and you do of course need to make sure you meet those in case you wish to wear that type of gear. In that case it is completely fine investing a few points into either Cunning or Spirit 2. Quick tip number 10 and the final for this video. To get a powerful start to your new build consider heading into the Crucible as the first thing you do. Start the Crucible and then let your character die. By doing so, you will instantly, weirdly enough, gain a level and unlock a bit of loot via the chests. However, the main reason for doing the Crucible early on is to unlock 5 quick devotion points. This can be achieved by earning tributes and turning them in at Toralia in the Crucible. For each 3 tribute points you turn in, she will award you 1 devotion point. To earn these tribute points, you have to start a new Crucible run by Lokar. After defeating 10 waves, you will receive 10 tribute points and also, at this point in time, since you're so low level, gain 6 additional levels plus 2 more for telling him you wish to stop and collect your loot. This takes you to a quick level 8, 
provides lots of magic and potentially also rare items from the chests and as I said three tribute points that you can then turn in at Terralia for one devotion point. Once you've done that, I recommend restarting the Crucible and repeating this process four more times to unlock 12 additional tribute points for the remaining four devotion points. You will also gain more experience and additional loot of course, but it is the tribute points that is the main goal here. The reason I suggest only going for five devotion points unlocked is that after that, the tribute cost requirement of unlocking further devotion points increases to five tribute points per devotion point. At that point, you might as well head into the campaign and begin your journey. But you can, of course, continue if you wish to do so. Now, this method requires the Crucible DLC and it is entirely optional. But by doing so, you can get a powerful start to your journey as you start the campaign. And that was part one of the 20 quick tips video for beginners to Grim Dawn. As I said in the intro of this video, I will release another 10 additional quick tips in another video a few days from now as there are many other important things to know about, such as reputations, fixing resistances, managing the devotion tree, respecking, looking up useful items for your build and much more. And knowing about these could potentially make you enjoy Grim Dawn even more. So keep an eye out for that video. And if you haven't already, but wish to purchase Grim Dawn, then I'd appreciate it very much if you do me the favor and use my Humble Bundle link found in the description below to obtain it. Purchasing it via Humble Bundle will directly support the stream and charities around the world. Via Humble you can directly activate the game on Steam in a quick and seamless fashion. Thank you very much guys. I also stream daily on Twitch TV slash Lifting Nerdbro, although I do have a few vacation days right now. Happy Easter by the way. But once I am back I hope to see you there too. Thank you for watching and bros, do you even nerd?